Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to a new empties video. So I'm going to be sharing a bit of my beauty garbage, some products that I've used up recently and giving you some in-depth reviews on them now that I have used the product entirely. So what do I have today? I have some skincare, hair, I have makeup, randomness. I have a, quite an assortment here. So I'm going to start off with the makeup products. So I did just finish up a mascara. And I'm really surprised that this mascara is done already because I don't feel like I had it open for very long. This is the Wonderland Mascara from Ciate London. And first of all, I'm going to say the packaging is a 10 out of 10. It has these really cute little star details throughout it and it's very heavy, very weighted. It reminds me of the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara packaging. And even the writing on it is raised and textured. So it definitely looks high end. So I'll give them that. And I reviewed this in a review video maybe a month or so back, and I said that I do think it's a good mascara. But here's the problem. When it comes to high-end mascaras and splurging on mascaras, I need them to far outperform my drugstore mascaras, and this just doesn't for me. It's a pretty good mascara, but I don't find it to be as buildable as I want. I find that I can get some clumping. And my biggest disappointment with this is that it does dry out pretty quickly, so I don't feel like I got as much use out of it as I could have. And then once it starts to dry out, you can still use it, but I get a lot of flaking once it dries out, and I didn't get a ton in the beginning. But it's very black, it, like it does build and gives you nice volume, so I would say maybe if you're not as picky with your mascaras as I am, and I'm looking for something very fluttery, separating, and lengthening, whereas this is a little bit more volumizing, and it's a drier formula. So if you're okay with that, Maybe if you can find it on sale, it'd be worth picking up, but I hesitate to recommend it for the full price when I have better drugstore options. The other makeup product that I finished up is from 100% Pure. This is their Coco Gem Bronzer, and I used this up in my project pan. Now, this is kind of a shimmery bronzer. The formula reminds me a little bit of the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, or the Becca Sunlit bronzers, where they're like really creamy, kind of more on the buildable side as opposed to being intensely pigmented, but also with a bit of sheen. But I will say this has quite a bit more sheen than both of those. So it gives you a very glowy cheek without being glittery or too glowy. It's not as shimmery as like the Milani Baked Bronzer, but it gives the cheeks a nice radiance. So I think that could be a pro or a con depending on your preference. This is pretty pricey, but it's an all natural brand. So if you're looking for a clean option for bronzer or for any makeup, I would check out 100% Pure. This bronzer I thought was really good. It makes your cheeks look very alive. I really enjoyed using this. A couple hair care products, this first one, you guys know, I've, you've, uh, so many of you guys are like, update us, update us. So this is the Moroccan Oil Color Depositing Mask. And that's actually how I got my hair, this brown shade. Now, I used this over a month ago. So this is kind of how the fading process has gone. And I wanted to mention it in this video, first of all, because it's in my empties bin. So that's how this video works. But also to kind of give you an update now that I've washed my hair quite a few times. I would say, and you guys have probably seen this also, the color has faded, but not really as much as I expected it to. So that's something to make note of. I think it will obviously vary based on your own hair. But one thing I really wanna point out is that hair that has been bleached is going to be more porous, so it's going to take to these hair dyes more. So because I have highlights and pieces of my hair that have been bleached on the bottom of my hair, those are the colors that are holding on, or not the colors, the sections that are holding on to this more. So I feel like it's faded more up top and then I have the color down here. And for some reason, at this point, it's looking pretty purple. And I don't know if you can tell on camera with my hair curled, but I had a couple people mention it when I was wearing my hair straight a few videos back that you could see I kind of had like purple low lights in my hair. It's not super purple, but enough. I do think it shows up a little bit brighter and more purple on camera. It's a little more subtle in person, but when I look at it, I'm like, oh, I can see the purple. Last night was, was hair washing night, and I went in and I like double shampooed, really focusing on like the ends of the hair to kind of fade it out, and I do think that worked, but I do want to mention this might last quite a while. It's going to depend on the color of your hair, how much it has been processed, and how often you wash it. 
I don't wash super often. I mean, I, I wash, but I don't wash my hair super often. I'm about a once, once or twice a weeker. So that's part of the reason this lasted a while, but I do think these are worth trying. I think it's a really fun concept. I'm interested to see when it does fade out. I'm almost getting a little worried about these purple low lights that I have. I'm hoping they go away. I did see a bit more fading from my last shampoo. So we'll see. I'll continue to keep you updated. They have a ton of shades in this. This is like a one use packet. It's $7 at Sephora, or you can buy a larger one for multiple uses. Sticking with Moroccan oil, this is their hydrating shampoo. Don't judge how it looks from being in my shower. And I do like this. Shampoo is one of those products that I don't feel the need to splurge on. So I don't know that I would necessarily repurchase this if it wasn't on a good sale, but I do feel that it was really clarifying to my hair. I do feel like, I don't feel like it was stripping to my hair, but you can tell that it definitely lathers and gets in there. So depending on your preference, you may or may not like that, but I thought it was a pretty decent shampoo. Moving into some skincare, I kind of forgot I had this and then I found it. So I've been working on finishing it up. This is the Pixi Nourishing Sleep Mask. And they, it's supposed to be, I mean, really truly sleep masks are kind of just like really intense moisturizers that you wear overnight. They say you're only supposed to use it about th two to three times a week. I kind of try to stick to that. I don't use it every single night, even though I don't think it would really do me any harm. But I, okay. When I first got this a year or two ago, I was like, wow, this is really great, very hydrating. But I don't know that I had tested enough skincare products to compare it to and i think now my skincare routine has evolved a lot and i have some really high quality products in my routine and now i'm kind of like well this is good it's hydrating but i don't know that it's as much of a miracle worker as i thought it was but i think previously i just wasn't doing enough steps in my skincare routine to really draw the moisture and hydration in that this seemed like it was doing a ton and it was i think i think it's a good product but now trying it again, maybe a year or so later, I'm like, okay, it's good, but it's not amazing, life-changing. But my favorite moisturizer is the Ultra Repair Cream. I know a lot of people use this on their body, on other areas. I use it on my face. I like it as a thick, heavy moisturizer. I find it to be, I don't find it to be too heavy even in the summer months, but I also have dry skin. I find that this gives me the hydration that I need and that I want so that my skin isn't too dry. Uh, I don't, it's hard for me to say how this would be on someone oily. I've heard people say that they don't find that it sinks into their skin. I do, but I think it might vary based on your skin type. But my boyfriend really likes this as well. He has eczema and he says that this really helps him. I also get like little patches on my skin sometimes also when I have very sensitive skin. I'm allergic to different types of metals. So sometimes I'll get irritations from my jewelry. And if I just apply a little bit of this, I notice that it goes away faster. So this is just a multi-use product. I'm already on to a new one. Oh my gosh, normally I film my empties videos and after every product I say whether I would repurchase or not. And I don't think I've done that. So let's do a little quick, quick repeat. Wouldn't repurchase unless it was on sale. Maybe would repurchase again if it was on sale. Would repurchase? Probably would not. Probably not. Maybe if it's on sale. Yes, for sure. Another moisturizer is a, another one from First Aid Beauty actually. This is actually one I'd recommend for my oily skin friends. This is the Ultra Repair Barrier Cream. I have like a teeny tiny bit left in the corner that I'm probably gonna use up tonight, but I figured I might as well throw it in this video. And this is kind of a lighter weight moisturizer. It's a very moussey texture. It kind of has a funny texture to it. The only downside I will say to this is sometimes I get a little bit of pilling and I just get random pieces that come up. It's not a huge deal. I can just kind of rub them in. It's not a terrible formula and it's not that it's gonna mess up other products I put on top, but I do think that's something to note. I don't think this is as hydrating as I would like it to be because I feel like it soaks into my skin pretty quickly and then I just feel like it's already absorbed, whereas I like something a little bit heavier most of the time, but if you like a more lightweight kind of gel type of moisturizer, especially if you have oily or combination skin, I think you would really like this formula. The final product is a little bit random, but I wanted to share it because I get questions quite a bit on cruelty-free teeth whitening. And this is from the brand High Smile. They reached out and sent me their teeth whitening kit. And I wanted to kind of review it and share my thoughts since I did use up two of these. So these little syringes come with the product in them. And I don't know if I can do this backwards. 
but you just apply a little bit of it to the mouth guard and then it has a little blue light that you put on and you put it in your mouth. If you guys remember this, this became really famous because Kylie Jenner was promoting it and I feel like this got so much buzz a few years ago. So I was interested to try it out and I actually do feel like it whitened my teeth. Now keep in mind, I'm not a dentist, I'm not a dental hygienist, I don't, that's not my area of expertise so I think this is always something you should consult your own dentist on. I'm just a person on the internet. But I did find pretty good results with this. My biggest thing is that I wish instead of putting the product in these little plastic syringes i wish they would just put it in a squeezy tube like if you just put it in a squeezy tube yeah it's harder to measure out how much you're applying but i just feel like these are so wasteful because you only this is two uses worth this is two days of whitening this is two days of whitening so i'm like i don't want to just always be using up these syringes or i mean they're plastic so that's so wasteful i wish they could come up with an alternative for that because I do think that the formula is nice. It's gentle. I didn't notice any like sensi um, sensitivity. What am I trying to say here? I didn't notice any sensitivity. Sense oh my gosh. I didn't notice that on my teeth. And I liked the result of it. So if you're interested, I'll leave that link down below as well as everything else in this video like I always do. But I hope that these reviews were helpful for you guys if you are curious about any of these products. And I will go ahead and see you in my next video. Bye.